for that. Welcome to a special post-game episode of Sports on the Hill podcast, episode 206. We talking Washington football team, Victory Tuesday over the Pittsburgh used to be undefeated Steelers. We also going to talk about the John Wall, uh, Russell Westbrook trade. We got the NBA roundtable. They came out of hiatus for a little while to talk about that major trade that happened with the Washington Wizards. But before we get into that, you know, you know, I got some things to say. But before I get into that, Robbie, how are you doing tonight, good sir? I- I'm doing awesome. I am so, so excited. So, for those who don't know, I love December. It's my favorite month of the year. And for the beginning of December and for Thanksgiving, for us to beat Dallas, and then for us to get this huge victory, I just found out that one of my friends, I'm not going to spill who it is, uh, but he became an uncle for the first time. And she was born during the game. And I, I was born during a Washington football, back then a Redskins versus Cowboys game. And we came back and beat the Cowboys. And this young lady was born during this comeback. And I think that's so cool, 36 years later. On Wednesday, it will be my birthday. And so you can see this is my big birthday present that my parents got me. Uh, They um, uh, gifted me this awesome jersey. It's the number one selling jersey uh, in the NHL store right now. Uh, It's sold out everywhere. It's really, really hard to come back. This is the Fanatics one. There's an authentic one, too. Uh, but we're the number one selling retro reversal jersey. So I'm super happy I snagged this. I was on it right when it started online. Um, I just got a blank one and I just got it shipped to me. I think I want to put uh, Tom Wilson on the back of it or leave it blank. I haven't decided yet, but uh, those are the two things I'm debating right now. Uh, but it's super happy. And so for my birthday, I was like, man, do I want to go even bigger than that? Could a victory by the Washington football team tonight be a realistic possibility? And you believed it. I didn't believe it. I told you. He did. And I, I give her credit too. His pregame prediction, he also went with them. But I always have to be negative. If I pick us, we always lose. So I was like, <laughs> I'm going to still pick against us, but pray that I'm wrong. And I've never been so happy to be wrong, Carol. I will concede the whole rest of the season in the pick em <laughs> thing. The whole thing is a wash. We, we beat the Cowboys on Thanksgiving. We swept uh, them. And we won my birthday week to have the first three-game win streak since 2018. And life is good. You are right. I will eat crow right here, right now, at the start of the podcast. Uh, everyone thought you were nuts, but people started to <laughs> shift through the week. People started to take us as the week went on. Uh, but still, Vegas had us as a 10-point dog going into the game, and we ended up winning. Dustin Hopkins is a beast. Uh, the kicking game was phenomenal. So much to break down. Uh, also, we will have our basketball roundtable in just about 40 minutes or so, and we'll break down that Wall Westbrook thing. I don't want to try to belittle that news. It's huge. Um, and uh, we'll break down the crazy fandom now where their fight their infighting has begun and there's just so much to break down it's more than just a trade it's a crossroads for a franchise carol and i'll break all that down um yeah yeah, we'll break that down towards the end of the hour but we want to bring uh dujane in uh and get his instant analysis we've never done a post game before for the washington football team because they've never had a game early enough uh but here we are it's not a pre-game We've lost when we've done a pregame for Pittsburgh before. I remember that five years ago. This time, we flipped the script. We're doing a postgame. And thank goodness uh, COVID delayed it a little bit. And whatever happened, enough happened to go right for the Washington football team to beat the previously undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. And that's just a great thing. So, Dujane, how are you doing tonight? Oh, I think you're muted. Wait, or at least did I? Make sure everybody mics is live. But it is a show isn't a show until somebody's <laughs> double mute. Yeah, but I I see that you are talking, but it doesn't display it on the Can I try it one more time? In your audio. Uh oh, we're having technical difficulties. For some Works. Yes, there we go. go. Yeah, whatever you just there did. You go, my boy. Yeah, yeah. Uh what's going on, my brother? You know, I haven't uh, had a chance to <laughs> To get up on my soapbox yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, how, how are you feeling tonight, good sir? I'm I'm feeling pretty damn good, man. I'm good. Yeah, it was a good, 
Good day. Good day. Really good <laughs> young team. Man, it was, uh, like I said, when we talked on Monday, I, I had a feeling about this game. Once I saw the way they played on the national stage against the Cowboys and the way they, you know, took over in the fourth quarter and were able to blow them out, which we haven't seen in I don't know how long. And the COVID situation, even though I'm, I said it after the Thanksgiving Day game, not before all of this other stuff happened. But um, I just had a feeling that this team was building something. The defense, like they mentioned, they went straight full rush the whole game. I didn't like it, <laughs> but it was effective. They, they did everything in all three phases of the game to win this game. And, I mean, to go from where they were and all the – haters on Ron Barrera and why did he go for the two-point conversion and now to see the growth that this team has made and to beat this team that, you know, before this week, nobody had Washington winning, but all of a sudden I've seen folks putting articles out and folks on NFL Network talking about, oh, there's a possibility that Washington can upset Pittsburgh. I'm like, no, don't, don't say it now. I said it almost two weeks ago. And it just feels good to finally be able to make a bold prediction. And from what I see, and it actually happens on the field and the team actually performs and gets it done. So it, it it's a, I feel pretty damn good, man. You know, I'm going to have some fun with this. How do you feel about this, uh, this game overall from beginning to end? I didn't get a chance to see the first half. I'm actually watching the replay now. If you want to watch it again, it's actually being played on NFL Network. So I didn't really get a chance. I listened to it, but I didn't get a chance to see it. So what is your overall take of this game, Dujan, man? What do you take away from this team beating this Pittsburgh team, even though it was on a short week's rest, even though we have had Sunday games and Thursday games for some teams in the same week? So, I mean, D'Angelo Hall said that on the pregame uh, while I was uh, listening, to, listening to the game that, you know, the NFL players, you know, sometimes you have those, swing, those swings and those turnarounds. And they have the luxury of being at home, so they, that shouldn't really be an issue. But we know they're human, so that plays an issue into it, you know. But what did you take away from this uh, 23-17 upset victory over the Pittsburgh 11-1 and used to be undefeated Steelers? Um, I, I don't want to hear people acting like they knew because um, you didn't. Uh, <laughs> well, no one really knew what this team was going to do. Um, you know, Steelers have been kind of it, – it's one of those teams that have been – and they've been undefeated, but they've been floundering a lot. And I think that was a statement that was made the week before uh, with the Ravens. Um, you know, uh, not the Ravens. The, who did they play before the Ravens? Oh, it was the Ravens. They, they were floundering in a lot of games. And before that, they were floundering in a lot of games. So they were kind of a iffy team to begin with. Um, I don't want to hear about whether they had rest, didn't have rest, whatever. Um Players come to play, and, you know, if this had gone the other way and this team gotten uh, lambasted, then, you know, we'd be talking about something else and they would be praised. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, for Washington, it's what we've seen in the last, I would say, three to, to, to four games. Uh, this team, no matter whether they make a mistake uh, defensively um, or, or offensively, it seems to just roll off their back like water on a duck's back. Um, they stayed with it. They stayed hungry. Uh, they never seemed to waver. Uh, you know, you had a couple of things. Kendall Fuller, an awful game today. Um, you know, just, again, it, and, and I have to question sometimes why they're playing 10 yards off, but the fact of the matter is you still are right there to make the tackle and you don't. So, um, you know, they had those type of miscues offense would go and do something positive and the defense would allow them to go down second half. They didn't allow anything, uh, any, any touchdowns that is, um, I thought the goal line stands are pretty awesome, but it really is a testament to both the head coach and the defensive coordinator and their attitude and, and what they're preaching. Um, you're starting to see it to come together now, uh, for this team, they're buying into what's going on. Uh, guys are understanding where they need to be and all they're not doing it perfectly, but they're not quitting either. Uh, you know, it's always the next play. And you can see that in a lot of these guys that 
it's it's very clear that it's it's just the next play. What I do want to say is, is I, I really don't want to hear anybody praising uh, Chase Young, uh, Montez Sweat, uh, any of those other – Deron Payne, any of those other young guys that you fans labeled bust, okay? Um, why don't you go kick that can down the road, uh, maybe to the Ravens, maybe to Dallas. I don't care where you go, but don't come here – talking about how great Chase Young is now. We tried to tell you that earlier. And I'm sorry I'm being blunt, but I'm kind of sick of the nonsense. So don't get on the wagon now because old boy's been balling. But I, like I said, some people can recognize talent and others cannot. So um, overall, though, this team balled out. And in the second half, like you said, like we were, you were talking earlier uh, during uh, before we went on, they make adjustments now. Isn't that nice to see teams see a team make an adjustment? They made an adjustment offensively, but defensively they made an adjustment, and they were they did something that teams have been doing to Pittsburgh uh, the, the their last I'd say four to five games. They haven't dominated anything. They've just made plays at the right time, and Washington took those plays away today. It was the. It was an interesting mix. I mean, the whole fans talking about their bust. I'm not even going to. I laugh at those folks when I, I don't even. I think that shot. You know I did. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i let you take it. I'm, I'm going to continue to take the higher road because it's, it's it's more fun taking the higher road now because then I just use my hashtag all football fans don't know football and that pretty much shuts me <laughs> But uh, it, it's – refreshing to see adjustments made that that's the one thing that I find comfort in why I, I feel optimistic about these games because you know me and Robbie talked during the game he's messaging me we suck you know we're going to lose why that's, that's, that, that's my modus operandi I'm always going <laughs> super negative all man, the time man. until it finally man, goes man. right <laughs> It <laughs> always be my way. I'm, like, I'm going well, to it's believe. Still early. It's still early. Calm I know, down. but, but the <laughs> earlier I do it, the quicker we can start the comeback. You know, like, yeah, you know, it's doom and gloom. We're, we're done. I said, if we go down 14 nothing, there's no way we come back. I have the text message chain with the NBA guys, and they're like, if we go down 14 nothing, it's over. Like, And then, of course, you know, that's. I really didn't believe that. I, I thought they were playing a really good game, and they just needed – to get the ball in the end zone. I, I was on the, I was on FaceTime with my mom the whole entire time. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the thing of it is, is that when they got, when they got the seven, it was, it was good. I, I knew that was a, that was a good thing. But when they, when they were able to make that thing like a four point game, I knew right then it's a whole new ball game. This is right where they want to be. And now it's just a matter of the, it was a matter of the defense being more consistent, keeping them out of the end zone at the very least and giving their offense a shot. And they did just that. And, and here we are. Major upset. You know, no one could have saw that coming, the way this team has just been Jekyll and Hyde, um, hadn't really consistently been able to muster up things. And I know what people will say about the Cowboys, but I mean, giving the Cowboys way too much credit. I mean, right. honestly, way right. too much credit. This, this game right here, it was today was just so funny because I had to drive all the way to my, I was supposed to leave work at four o'clock, be home in time for the game at five. My manager comes to me at two thirty, asks me, could I go pick up a car from all the way out Manassas? So I'm going all the way out Manassas, get all the way back. I'm listening to the game on the way back. And I'm like, they, they're right there. They're holding them. They had two, three and outs on both sides. And, you know, as soon as I walk in the door, turn the TV on, Cam Sims gets that 30-yard reception to set up the field goal before half. I text Robbie, say, yeah, I just came home. I just turned the game on. We're going to win this game. That bold prediction I made, I told you, I felt it. I wish I just had some money to back it up. <laughs> broke right now. I wish I'd have got a chance to go to the MGM, put some money on it. But, unfortunately, that's another story. I'll but take I the victory. Don't, don't put too much pressure on the line. You know, I, I'll – I could have used both. I could have <laughs> yeah. used both. But uh, it, it's just, like you say, the adjustments being made, the fight in this team, the, the, the attention to detail. And I do want to talk about Kendall Fuller real quick. I think he's a better slot corner than outside corner. 
And I think when he went to Kansas City, because of the defense that they run and always having a lead because of their offense, he was made to look better than he was on the outside. I felt like he was always a stronger slot guy. What do you think about that, Dujanae? Because like you said, it, this was one of his worst games that he's played, and I didn't think I would see that from him after he played at Kansas City and had got that Super Bowl championship. You normally see the player, you know, get better, not have games like this. Like, granted, this one game, he's been playing well all season, but some of the mistakes and missed tackles he was making this game, I I, I don't know. I want to see him in the slot because I feel like Moreau is a better outside corner than slot corner, and they I think they just need to switch it up and put Phil on the inside and leave Moreau on the outside. I don't agree, and here's why. Too often, too often, uh, I'll go back to the play that, uh, what was that, uh, Williams scored the touchdown on, okay? Fuller was 10 yards off his man. They were tight on the right side and on the back side of the play, Fuller's 10 yards off. Explain to me why, because I'm going to tell you right now, anybody knows, I don't care how great you are, if I got a guy, those they have receivers over there, okay? If I got a guy that's 10 yards off, you're automatically giving him the catch. Now, you better do, for sure make a sure tackle. And, and, and if you notice, he reached out to try to wrap him up. What he should have done was get low and drive through him instead of trying to wrap him up. And But that's what corners are going to do. He's being aggressive coming down. Every time he gets a 10-yard cushion and has to come down on a receiver like that, bad things happen. And if you man up and let an aggressive corner be aggressive and do what he does best, guess what? That play's never going to get off because he's going he's gonna to slow that down. There's not going to be an open guy. Ben's going to have to hold that a little while longer. And guess what? Them boys in young, sweat, pain, you name it, will get there and collapse that pocket, or he's going to have to dump it off short. Uh, I, I'm not blaming Fuller on a lot of this stuff because what I'm seeing, and it's not just on Fuller. They they make Darby look bad. They make other the other corners look bad uh, in, in uh, geez, Jimmy Moreland. It's because they're giving them 10-yard cushions on good receivers. These are not chumps. These are really good receivers. And if you're going to do that, all they need to do is try to make you miss. And nine times out of 10, if you're in an open field, when you come down aggressively, you're going to reach out and try to wrap him up. If he had a, had a been in position to drive through him and tackle him, you wouldn't have had that problem. So I, I, I want to see man-to-man -man lock him up. And if you get beat that way, I, I, think, I think no one's going to be upset about it. But when you get beat like that, it, it you you look at the corner, but really look at the defense called. It it doesn't help anyone. And I think we know watching other defenses that you don't need top tier corners to, to look good in the secondary. Just got to do a better job. And I think this playing all stuff it works every now and then, but um not against quality receivers and definitely not against a quality quarterback and Ben Roethlisberger. So. Um, I, I think Fuller's fine. I think Fuller's fine on the outside. They just have to play to their strengths. And that, and, and really for any corner, I think it's difficult. I don't even, you know, you can even throw Dion in there. And Dion, if he heard it, he'd probably say, nah, bro. Nah, not me. But look. We're going to have to make some type of adjustment, I keep oh. saying, because they can't continue to give them. I agree. I, I hate the 10 yard cushion, but they have to do something. Because we saw tonight, like I said, they, they rushed straight for blitz very rarely to try to protect from the, I don't want to say inexperienced, but with all the moving pieces and, you know, Cameron Curl getting hurt, Reeves coming in, you have a lot of inexperience out there. So I think they're trying to protect them from the big play, but they're going to have to eventually, like you say, go man up and let them loose and start to let this front seven wreak havoc so they won't have time to throw the ball and get the, the out and ups and everything. So he was man, he was man to man on, on, on Williams and he was 10 yards off. And that's, that's allegedly, that's your best corner out there. So why is he 10 yards off? But y'all you're tight man to man on the front side of the play, but the backside 
you're 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 ten yards off. I, I don't understand. And he went backside and missed the tackle. And then of course everybody looking at the safety and uh and uh the Desha- the Desha- Shazer Everett as missing that tackle. But it all starts with the corner. All starts with the corner. If he's manned up, the front gets there. They were getting there all the whole time. So they they just have to do better with that. You know, I know I understand what you're saying on that, but when it's your best corner playing 10 yards off, I have a problem. I feel you. I feel you. I mean, like I say, I, I can't argue with your logic. Let me get to some of these comments on the Facebook live feed because uh yeah, it is Victory Tuesday, so folks is feeling good. I'm glad y'all tuning in for the bold prediction show. You know, I called this game. I'm gonna talk about it for a little while because I said it before everybody else did even though everybody going to act like they knew it was going to happen. Uh, my man Fred says Montez Sweat with another clutch play. Yeah, I mean, we, here. Man, I mean, Lou, you know, he, he broke it down when they drafted him, how, how much of a athletic freak this guy was going to be. And you guys just didn't listen. Now you're starting to understand what he broke down and what he diagnosed when he goes to these senior bowl games. So these are the things that y'all don't see. That's why we bring him on because we don't get to see it. He to preview the, the stuff that we don't know that we don't get to see, but we try to bring it to you so you can understand it. But most folks don't get that. They want to think that, you know, whatever, whatever. But, you know, I ain't going to, you know, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep my, I ain't going to get on my soapbox tonight. <laughs> uh, I see Mark Moore's in the building. Yeah, there's still his laws, baby. Washington football team won. Uh, said Fuller had a couple of bad plays and one bad call, but I wouldn't say he played a terrible game. Somebody backing you up, Dujanae. Uh, it's a defense line has been solid. They're saying that since the beginning of the season, linebackers have stepped up the last three games. I can definitely agree with that. They have been playing more aggressive because Ron did call out the linebackers a few weeks ago, and they have been playing better. They've been crashing down more in control and actually making the tackles and swarming to the ball, which is you know what you have to do. Uh, let's see. He said McClissick stepped up after Gib- after Gibson went down. Yeah, I hope that Gibson and they say it toe. So I'm hoping nothing too too major that we'll definitely see him back this season. You know, not seeing the rest of the game. You know, it was good to see them to be able to still find a way to get the offense moving in one way or form and get the victory. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brian said, "How about Hopkins? His slump seems to be over. I know you were telling people to calm down. I mean." At- how many times have kickers got cut from his team and he killed this again? <laughs> and NFC East teams are right against us. So I, I've been telling folks to pump their brakes, man. Oh, I see. Brittany's on the thing. Hey, Brittany, how are you doing tonight? I know you probably cussed this team out all in the first half, and now you're basking in the victory Tuesday. <laughs> I'm glad you're tuning in, man. He said Fuller did not have his best game. He was a liability most of the night. Yeah, well, Dujanate just broke down some of the reasons for that, so I hope you check that out because – I thought the same thing, but he did make some valid points. And like I said, I didn't see the whole game. I'm watching it as we're doing the show right now. Uh, I haven't heard anything about Gibson yet. You had anything about, uh, man, Hurts on the feed too. He just said it looks like turf toe. Yes. Three to five weeks usually. Damn it. Oh, well. There it goes. It's always something. He was fine to find his We got him for the Dallas game. I, you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, that's that's you know that'll go down in history right there. It's one of those. Up- yeah, I mean, so. he definitely had a you know, has shown once hey. Dujane said that he would definitely excel with the transition from wide receiver to running back, and I concurred once I watched some of the tape and you know some of the things that he told me about him and saw some of his film, and it's just you know, and ironically, okay. this is the part of the game where he's actually leaving the game on the rebroadcast. That's funny. Real quickly, but, uh, yeah. real quickly, Carol, I just was going to say, this might actually be a blessing in disguise because, I mean, Coach had wanted to try to do running back by committee, and he just kind of out of the gate just took over the position. So, you know, maybe it would be good for some of the other guys to get some touches here, and then he comes back into the mix in a couple of weeks. I don't know. You know, I, so there's a possibility that down the line, you know, maybe he could come in, you know, and, uh, you know, maybe even a playoff appearance, which would be so. I mean, yeah, three crazy. to five weeks, he still has a shot to – possibly get back in the game but you know he he showed what he could do he got some uh a lot of reps and he's got experience as the nfl running back now and he had that those two major games against the cowboys so one thing we do know when he sees that star he's gonna put up 100 yards on it. that's gonna be very interesting to see 
how he flourishes going on in his career. For some reason, you know, certain players play well against a certain team. We've seen players go well against the Washington team, and we never know why. They just go off. Now we're seeing him go off two games in a row against them. That's uh, definitely nice to see. Uh, Mark was asking about Barber. Well, Barber is more of the, like they say, the hammer, the short down guy, right. short down guy. So, you know, McClissick gives him so much more versatility at the uh, running back position because he can go out and uh, line up as a wide receiver, slot, backfield, jets. Uh, monster. What'd you say, Dujane? Go ahead. When he doesn't get tripped up by the turf monster, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the guy he's upright he is very shifty he showed that today yeah he's uh really that, that's the same thing with him and logan thomas those were two of the first signings that they made in free agency and a lot of folks were scratching their head now you understand why ron rivera is who he is and why you're at home punching keys on. <laughs> they obviously know what they're doing they utilize them to their skill set you have a tight end converter from quarterback is having the best season, you know, in his career after making the transition. McClissick has always, you know, had the potential, but now it's being highlighted. And we mentioned that, you know, it's about changing the culture and about getting the young guys out there and letting them make plays and make this team better and make this team shine. And you're seeing it in the process in, of one season. You have to think about that. We're right seeing this team mature and find this identity and find and take the identity of its coach in the first season. Go ahead, Robbie. I was gonna say that Cam Sims is also a guy who I love to see. You know, I think he's got such potential. You know, to really be uh, that next wide receiver. And you know, I, I just I think that Scary Terry had an, a little bit of an off game tonight, but I mean, he's so dangerous. And it's just I like the mix. And I, I mean. That tight end is a beast. He reminds me of a uh, Jordan Reed a little bit and just sort of how he – I mean, his diving for that first down, I still think that's a bogus call. I still think that he made that first down. Yeah. Well, he's being healthy. <laughs> Jordan yeah. Reed didn't do yeah, that. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know. <laughs> what do you say about uh, some of these uh, – Cam Sims, definitely, he's been stepping up. It's good to see him make some plays. What do you think about this uh, offense starting to – you know, even though it's only played a, a half of football, but you're starting to see the potential and what they can do when they're actually not getting penalties and, you know, not shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, they have the potential to, you know, really move the ball in so many different ways. Um, you know, you see the innovation with the uh, play where you see Logan Thomas going to center. I really wish Logan had kept it um, and maybe scampered off to the right. I thought that was open. Um, instead of pitching it like that. But you like the the creativeness and the, the innovative way of how they just expanded on a play they had used uh, in previ previous weeks. So um, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Cam Sims, I've always been high on him. I didn't think they he was used quite well. Um, and, you know, think about the fact they still have a Calvin Harmon who's, uh, you know, <laughs> injured. Uh, so you don't have him out there, but that's a guy who's already shown that he can uh, ball. Uh, so now you have an emergence of Cam Sims. Um, I, I know people would like to see more from Terry, but you got to credit the Pittsburgh Steelers defense for uh, uh, really taking him away and forcing other guys uh, to beat him. Um, I'd like to see Steven Sims to step up a little bit more, uh, Steven Sims Jr. to step up a little bit more um, and be you know a little bit more consistent. He had a couple drops. But overall, uh, you can see them really start to come into their own. Uh, they're still, you know, finding and, you know, finding their way a little bit. Um, but I don't think, you know, the first half was sloppy, but I also have to give them credit for the fact that they just kept uh, chipping away at it. Uh, both teams weren't having that great of success. And I know they got 14, but, you know, when you look, when you take away those 14 points, uh, some things were circumstantial. Um, and one really touchdown was off of a big play off a missed tackle, uh, you know, wasn't very good. And on top of that, they had just, what, that was nine plays or so inside the goal line, and they come up with a goal line stop. Um, they're you know, not they're they're that, up against the goal line like that uh, to make, you know, to try to move out. They were trying to be safe, not turn it over, not give them a safety. I thought they made some smart things. They ended up having to punt. 
and then the defense gets back out there and again you're playing 10 yards off a guy if you man up maybe that doesn't even happen but um I like what I'm seeing from this uh, team uh, guys like JD um, McKissick guys like Barber here for a reason um, you know you see what they bring to the table uh, they're veterans they, they they've been doing this stuff their whole career and they're really fitting in well with the uh with the offense and now you see the emergence of Logan Thomas getting more and more consistent he's looking like a healthy Jordan Reed out there um so uh, I really like what they're doing uh there and then you, you get this emergence of Cam Sims now people have to start game planning for all of these guys and now you're going to have these big time plays where you're going to hit one to uh um, uh, a, a scary Terry, or you're going to hit a Cam Sims like they did with that one-handed catch uh, at, at a real prime time when they needed it. Um, and he made a big play there. So um, I think credit too goes to, to um, you know, um, Alex Smith. And, and we said this when he was placed a, as the starter. Um, he's going to take what the defense gives him. Uh, you're not always going to get the big shots down the field, but he's going to take what's being given and move the chains it doesn't look you know doesn't look flashy not these not always the big chunks that you would like but man when they get themselves in position and you just chip away at it and then all of a sudden boom that that play down the field or that play uh, that run play where somebody bounces it outside and and gets a nice run that's what you want to see because those are the type of things that that really, those plays really break open a game and he's not turning the ball over and that's important. I, I've seen some people take a shot saying that Haskins wouldn't have been able to do this. Well, let's not forget that uh, Alex Smith in a key game threw an interception that cost him a game that they really could have come back and won. Um, so, you know, things happen. Um, it's not just about that. And let's be real, um, Haskins isn't ready for this type of moment. How many times has yeah. Alex Smith been in this moment been in this situation and you can see the experience there there was no panic but his no panic also allowed everyone around him to not be a no panic and again they just chipped away and chipped away next thing you knew they went from being getting back in the game to tying the game and then from tying the game to winning the game and that's important and and that's what you that's all you have to do um i don't want to jump ahead but you look at the schedule uh, outside of the Steelers now, we have the, the 49ers are on tonight. Um, they're not really all that good. Uh, and I'd say – They're down at half. <laughs> see, you see how – that's what I was getting ready to say. See how they manage against Buffalo. But that's a winnable game. Uh, the, the only game I see going out here uh, is that it could be a loss. Um, is the Seattle – is a definite loss for me, in my, in my opinion, is, is the Seattle Seahawks. And I know people are like, oh, well, they lost – well, look, man, teams like this have this all the time. There's some te- some game that they really shouldn't lose. They're on a hot streak, and they give up one against the Giants. Okay, fine. But I guarantee you, I, I really don't think they give it up again like that uh, to a team uh, in the Washington football team that, that's really not on their level. Um, the good well, That's you know, going to be a difficult game. It is. It, but the good thing is it is in Washington. So we'll see. Um, but – they could easily go three and one here. If they go two and two, they likely win the division. And 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 the reason why I say this is, and I have people uh, at me right now about the Giants winning division. But let me break something down for you real quick uh, while we're looking at while we're looking at that. Um, you know, you, the people are talking about that, but look at the Giants' schedule. I don't know if anybody you can pull it up at home. You can pull it up on your phone as well. But the Giants have the Cardinals. They have the Browns. The forty, uh, um, the the Ravens and the Cowboys. I'm gonna tell you right now, two of those games they're not winning. I, I I go with the Browns and the Ravens. Cardinals are not very consistent, but that that is a game they could lose as well. But Browns and Ravens they're not winning. They're so what what are we talking about here? They 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 likely could lose the next three, but the the thing of it is, Washington would be better off going three and one than two and two because they don't own the tiebreaker against a team they really should have swept. Okay. So yes. this could look, this is going to be interesting for sure. And, uh, Hey, I, I, I'll be cool. And I think it'll be nice if they can get an eight and eight, eight and eight season when most of us, including myself 
looked at it as a six and ten season, and that this division winner was going to be a six and ten football team that was going to go into the playoffs, maybe a seven win team. There actually could be an eight and eight team that actually makes it, which is respectable. And I think anybody will take that. Um, on the high side, <laughs> could could we dare say nine and seven? <laughs> Can we dare say nine and seven is a possibility? I think if you look at the grid of this football team, I, I, I'm not going to say it's not a possibility. Um, Ron Rivera proved to me that that anything is possible. Like you know, you know, he proved that there's anything possible with this football team, and they beat an eleven, a uh, once eleven and zero team uh, who's very polished with a lot of weapons. Uh, Real quickly, I just really wanted to say that I couldn't. There was goal line stands and the energy that that brought to the team, you know, and the energy that you could sort of feel between the offense and the defense and then working together as a team is something I never saw in the Jay Gruden area. I always felt that they were two halves of a football team that were never connected. I always kind of felt like it's the offense and the defense and they were just never on the same page where today I felt like the momentum was building, which good teams have to do. They have to work together and no team is going to be perfect. Right. right. And it, you just got to kind of take what is given to you and make plays. And I wanted to go back to that thing you said about Alex Smith real fast. He is a gamer. He was cut by a cleat and he never, they never phased him. He made the next bunch of throws, you know, he's bleeding. They're, they're just wrapping him up and, and I'm sorry, but like, I don't think that, you know, a guy who's brand new to the system, you know, or a year or two in in Haskins would have had that same resolve. And it's not that I don't like Haskins. It's just, that's really hard to learn on the fly. And yeah. yeah. Like we um, talked about, Alex has been in a lot of different situations. He's been, you know, with a lot of you know, different organizations where he's played different roles and, and done what he's done. He's definitely... This is, I guess, why Rivera said that he can see him being the so-called franchise quarterback for a couple of years as the bridge to get. Because, as you said, he's cool, calm, and collected. He knows the offense. He's not going to wow you with, you know, going down the field in a big play for the highlight reels. But he's going to make the right decision. He's going to get the ball, keep the chains moving, and he's going to stay ahead of the chains. So you're not one-dimensional. So the team defense can't pin their ears back and then, you know, know you're passing all the time. It's about balance. It's about play calling. Uh, my man Eric made a uh, comment about the third down calls, the uh, wide receiver screen in the fourth quarter. I mean, Scott Turner, as you got to remember, he's still learning also. This is his first full-time offensive coordinator gig. Yep. So he's learning on the fly too. I mean, he called a pretty good game against the Cowboys. I didn't – there's a few plays I didn't like, but he, he had the offense moving. They were doing good things. So there's going to be some things you're not going to like, but some things they do to set other things up, you know, so they might not be effective, but they might be setting up something for later on in the game or for some other team to see it and key in on it and they can use it at a different time and use a different play or a different mix off of that formation because they're thinking they're going to do that play. So there's a lot of things that go into it. You know, I don't like some of the third down calls with them in shotgun all the time. Sometimes you just got to line up and let Peyton Barber just run the thing up the middle and get that yard. I just, you know, but like we've talked about many times, sometimes these offensive coordinators outthink themselves and, you know, overcomplicate a simple situation. So right. the team is growing, they're developing, and they're they're growing as a team. And that's the, that's the best thing. We've seen certain players flourish and, you know, certain uh, position groups flourish, but now we're seeing the whole team flourish. I mean, from the special teams, Dustin Hopkins making 49-yard field goals in a notoriously windy, swirling stadium. You know, folks was talking on about – On a cold night. On a cold night, talking, talking about cutting them and he sucks and all this and that. Then you have, you know, Sims had, you know, didn't do anything flashy on the return, but he didn't turn the ball over. Then, you know, you have the defense, that goal line stand. I still – I'm. Uh, didn't get a chance to see it just now. I'm going to rewind and look at it on my DVR. But the defense ball, like I said, nine plays inside the, the five-yard line, and they keep them out. And then the offense finally getting it together, you know, finding the rhythm and getting points when needed. I mean, 
what more can you ask from for your football team? Well, sixty four right. minutes of football. They 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 played a good game. I just didn't like the like you said the sloppiness in the beginning and some of the mistakes. So, but but Pittsburgh's undefeated and they're resilient. And one thing that I wanted to point out real quickly is their ability, their offensive line is incredible, right? So our defensive line is one of our strengths. You know, trying to get to the quarterback, but their offensive line hadn't allowed a sack. I think they said in like two years almost or something. Like you know, just like a bunch of games. I think it was like eight, nine, you know, it was like back the last year. And, um, you know, they're just able to, um, you know, put this unstoppable front. And I think that's really good practice for our defensive line. You know, I think that what we'll see now is they're going to get to the quarterback in the next couple of weeks because nobody else has got the offensive line like the Steelers. And now they know that they can compete with them. I mean, they were making them work and, um, I think that that's incredible, especially in a season where we didn't have an off season. You don't have, you know, some of these reps and these in game. These guys are still young. This defensive line is still really, really young, and so I think that this is an incredible experience for them to know that they can come into a Pittsburgh and beat that and have that psyche going forward. Absolutely. And uh, one thing I'll say too is um, fans may not have been able to see you from the broadcast, but uh, you know I, I've been chatting it up and looking at that things with Lake Lewis and uh, you should have seen the sideline. <laughs> you should have seen the sideline. Um, they were really into the game. Uh, uh, the guys were into the game. They, they're they really pulling for one another, uh, both sides. Um, I think uh, Holcomb was the last one to come off the field. Um, there's a clip of that. Uh, you go to Lake Lewis's uh, Twitter, at Lake Lewis. Um, so these guys are unifying. So that, that's a really good sign uh, when you have guys uh, during the game uh, cheering up, uh, being excited, um, and really being into the game and energized. And that's going to go a long way for this team's confidence. Tonight was a huge win, a huge build for their confidence. And I'd like to see what they can do for the rest of the season. I think anything is possible in these last four games. Um, and they very well, who knows? I mean, I, I know I said I don't see them beating Seattle, but who knows? They may pull off another one, and again, they play Seattle at home. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a possibility against Seattle. We saw, you know, they went down to the Giants. I wasn't expecting that, especially with Colt McCoy starting quarterback. That kind of threw me off when I saw the final score. But uh, I think this team is getting hot at the, at the right time. They're building confidence in themselves. They, you know, they, they don't quit. And like we talked about, they're taking on the identity of their coach. They're, you know, finding their identity. You know, they're starting to figure out what plays work. Now we're starting to see. They mentioned McClissick doing that little uh, bubble, uh, little wheel route out the backfield off the jet sweep. They say, you know, that's been effective a couple of times this game. Well, now we're starting to see this team have go-to plays for situational football. And then when you can start having plays that we all remember the heyday with, you know, Joe Gibbs and, you know, running the ball, 46 gut, you know, you know what's coming, you know what play it is, but you can't stop it. And once they start having those stable plays and can, you know, move the change when they need to and calm things down when the momentum starting to swing to the other side, that's, that's when you're in a whole different level of being a team. And it took this team five out of the six years under J to get to have maybe one or two plays that they could go to in a situation, you know, that they could say, okay, we can get a first down. We're starting to see this offense starting to, you know, we saw a third and 16. You know, they weren't stellar on third down tonight, but they got some at a crucial time in the game when they needed them. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. I'd rather win the second half than the first half, you know? So, like, I agree. Their third downs looked atrocious in the first half. Um, but at the same time, they were obviously learning from those moments. And I feel like Jay Gruden – didn't learn from those moments and didn't make the adjustments needed. And, and that's what you're seeing here. And it's obviously a difference maker. I, I'm still kind of stunned that we're sitting here having this conversation. I, you know, that's just, you know, I, I thought it was possible, but I just didn't, you know, it's, it's obviously the coaching. I think both the offensive and defensive coaching are both able to make adjustments and you can see it on both sides. It's not just one or the other. I think in, previous seasons the defense would make an adjustment but the offense wouldn't or the other team would make an adjustment to their offense and then you know it's rarely that both were making adjustments in you know together in a positive direction at the same time 
And that's how he had to come back and win a very close game. I mean, I think Pittsburgh didn't play particularly well, but I also give a lot of credit to the Washington football team for making some crazy stands, punching the ball up in the air, getting the interception. I mean, these are timely plays that we hadn't seen in the past. Absolutely. Yeah, they said it during the broadcast with all the drop passes and all the uh, balls that were getting batted in that eventually Washington was going to come down with one of them. And thank goodness Vosick was there to get that one to secure, you know, another three points and to basically run the clock down to give Pittsburgh no chance of uh, winning the game. And it was a, you know, like I say, it was a team effort. You know, you saw no quit, you know, going back to the, the goal line stand, you know, it was third down, about to be fourth down when they called that penalty on settle. I didn't see it. Like I said, I don't know. But I saw a couple of questionable phantom calls that helped Pittsburgh out of some third down situations, a couple of hands to the face calls where I never saw a hand go to the face, but it extended their drive. But this team just didn't give up. And that, that third down, and then you got a fresh set of downs on the one-yard line against Pittsburgh Steelers you know, who run the ball, who get scores, who score touchdowns, and actually hold them and not give up any points on that. On a, on a running play, just getting that helmet in there, and just, I mean, when you look at that replay, it's inches, right? I mean, they, they give it to us on the half-yard line, but, I mean, if that helmet's not there to knock it back and they're just on that nose of the ball, that's a touchdown. I mean, you have to be on it to, like, that degree, and it was just an incredible thing just – but on all multiple fourth downs, well, I can't believe they threw it on that one. I, I mean, great defense, you know, by the defender for the Washington football team. But like, why aren't they like running it or a safer play than that? I just don't. I, I don't. I. This is the second week in a row that we've gotten fortunate that other teams are passing it on these sort of uh, short yardage plays. Well, they don't respect the secondary, though. I. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. They really don't, and that's why they do it. They pay for it. They've made them pay. And, and rightfully so. But a lot of times, I, I really think that uh, because there are some miscues in the secondary, they feel like they that they can get these things on these guys and they just don't respect them until they make them pay. And that's fine. <laughs> that's what you want them to do. You want them to underestimate your ability. Um, but I think people are taking notice. Um, you know, covering the NFC South here, uh, and, and when, you know, even when Ron was here, um, you really, I mean, I, I don't know if, you know, fans have seen much of what Ron was doing there in Carolina, but this team over the last half of this season or this, it was just, this is the third quarter of this season. They're going to be going to the fourth quarter of this season. They really look like a Ron Rivera team like they had in Carolina. You see the way the defense is playing, uh, opportunistic, the front seven, very scrappy. Uh, they grind you. Uh, they really get after you. They punish you. Uh, e even if they don't make plays, you, you're going to know. Um, and, and offensively, no, nothing flashy. No, nothing, you know, no, no, no Patty Melt Mahomes type stuff, but they're getting it done. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, but doesn't that sound like, uh, doesn't sound like, I mean, I don't want to get crazy, but offensively doesn't that sound like your 91 washington you know r's uh, with, uh <laughs> you know what i mean it also reminds me of what the ravens did right you know uh, to win a lot of their super bowls and i think it's a formula that has worked through history you know the sort of defensive smash mouth you know i think we see this sort of high floating you know high passing you know systems in today's nfl but that grinded out defense, you know, is always going to be there in the end. I mean, look at the Steelers. I mean, they're passing it more, but their history is that style. So, yep. And you saw what it did to the Steelers today. I mean, you know, they, they, I think that's what fans should be super excited about. They hung in there and they grinded out a win. This is a true grind out win. I know we've had that, set that term under, you know, Gruden and, and all that. But this this here was a true grinded out win. You're down 14. I mean, how many times, how many times have this football team's fans see, been down 14 and been like, yep, going to bed? Especially <laughs> on a Monday night. I, I saw people exactly. comment that they were doing that. I was like, okay, hopefully you were the bad luck and now you're going to bed. So, you know. <laughs>
Yep. And, and here we are with a win. Um, I, I think I think it's incredible. I think fans should be really excited. Uh, make sure you brag and um, uh, dig at a Dallas fan because I love seeing it on my on my feed. Uh, it's really funny. Um, and a Pittsburgh fan. I, I had to call some Pittsburgh fans real quickly because they were like, no chance. They were laughing at it. They were making – you know, I know, Carol, that you've got a couple of Pittsburgh fans that I've become friends with now because they're friends with you. And they were making jokes that they're going to stomp on the shit of the, you know, Washington football team. And, you know, uh, they're not anymore. So oh, I, you know. had, I had one of my uh, folks to actually chime in on a post I made about some of those phantom calls. He was like, calm down, dude. I was like, all right. Yeah I, I, yeah, I made my bold prediction. I said what I said, and I'm sticking to my story. I knew he was going to win this game. I ain't seen the peep out of him on my page. <laughs> he might have unfriended me because we doing the show right now. So if you're watching, the hell with that perp, that 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 black and yellow. I don't nope. care. This is we revenge this- for all those times they invaded our stadium when I was a season ticket holder, where they had like three quarters of the stadium, and it really disgusted me. We'll wave and- your flag now, buddy. Exactly. So. <laughs> That's the, um, the term business is booming. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby, it's, it's 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 just uh it's a beautiful some of place. those hits though like the knock them out of bounds where they could have gotten first yard or inbounds and time cl- i mean we just, had to make lots of plays throughout that game to win and they, a lot of things had to go our way some drops had to go our way we got lucky on a couple of plays you know um you know, some players that would make some plays didn't today and i'm thankful for that uh but at the same time you make enough plays to win a game, you sometimes win a game. And, you know, that's what we saw today. Big Juju stats, too, man. Look look at what they did to Juju. Hey, yeah. you know, my fantasy football team, I lost this week because of him and Ben, damn it. You happy about taking that L, though, so don't. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm happy to watch the football team win, but now my playoffs is on a, is on a brink on a – on a fancy football, I'm still. But, but you're dominating pickup. Pick you're do- just I'm just still, take yeah. take that W. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm trying to hold out. I got somebody on my heels, man. You know, it, and at this Washington football game, I think put me up five points on him now because I don't think he took Washington. I didn't football. make my early picks, and I still almost came back and did okay. But you know, man, oh well. Hey, I ain't gonna miss. I'm, I'm over, it. but I, I'll still continue to jinx with my picks or something. That's what I was going for this week. So. Hey, I'm going. I'm going for the trifecta, man. I'm, I'm going for the, the fantasy football. And I'm going for the the the, the pick them, and I'm just going for now just to talk trash that I was right about this. And we swept the cow. So <laughs> it's it's it's. I mean, you told me, and I got a couple of Pittsburgh fans at my job that I didn't even say nothing to about my bro addiction, but I'm going to go play the video for them so they can check it out. Just let them know I called it and I knew it was going to happen. But, uh, awesome. but Duche, we, should let you, we should let you go. I appreciate you staying on for so long with us, but this has been fun. I, we got to do post games more often, right? Yeah, it has been. Uh, it's nice to talk about something that positive that's happened with this team. Um, it's nice to see the growth with this team. Um, and it really showed uh, tonight on a really big stage. I know a lot of people, only 40% of people got a chance to see it um, because of the Fox Network, you know, junk. But uh, well, yeah. that was because they're not allowed to show it on channels that wouldn't have had it already. They shouldn't get a broadcasting advantage for the delay. But it is kind of bullshit. At least put it on Prime Video. They, they, they'll simulcast tomorrow's game on Prime but not this one. I don't understand why that was true. That's but. probably why they re showing it on the NFL Network right now. Oh. You can see it. But it's yeah. it, it's really nice to see this. And um, I, get excited, fans. I think – look at the schedule. Get excited. This is this this could have pretty much sealed the deal uh, for them not possibly winning the division and making the playoffs. And, you know, that, could, that doesn't – that isn't here or there for me. But it, what is – there for me is the confidence of this football team moving forward. And if that means winning the division, if that means uh, getting a playoff home game, um, then let's continue this uh, streak for this football team. And uh, hopefully uh, they, they can at least start to see that the fruits of their labor are showing on the football field. And we know how important that is uh, for a player's confidence in building camaraderie as a football team and tonight you guys saw your football team come together and band together as one and uh, reach 
a, a goal that that no one most did not think that they would do. Um, so this is going to be huge for the rest of the season going forward for this last uh, fourth quarter of the season. So uh, strap in tight, guys. It's it's going to be a fun ride. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, breaking down more games with you going forward. But just what an exciting moment. And it's just I'm excited because I have exciting games after my birthday. Usually my birthday is this week. And so usually after that, for most seasons, you know, the games are much less exciting. And so I'm excited that we'll get to hopefully have exciting games through Christmas, maybe and uh, maybe even beyond. So uh, that's a cool thing. and It makes me really happy. And I look forward to breaking down uh, maybe the 49ers game next week with you in Arizona of all places. Uh, but we'll know the stadium. We were there before. So maybe that's like some small advantage. Uh, who knows? So Never know. Anything. Yeah. Have a good one. And anyone who wants to check out more of uh, Dujanae and the breakdown, always check out our uh, podcast partners button on the sports OTHP website. Uh, click uh, sports OTHP.com. Click podcast partners. It's got the breakdown. Uh, it's got a bunch of other podcasts uh, from all of our team. And so we really appreciate you as always, Dujanae. You do a great job. And I, I look forward to talking to you soon. Yeah, look forward to talking to you guys soon too. And uh, Carol, I, I won't I won't doubt you again on that one. <laughs> and I, Sometimes you got to just jump in the car and ride with me, baby. Sometimes you just got to jump in the car and ride. You know, we don't know where we're going to end up, but we're going to end up safe wherever we're going to end up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have a good night, guys. All right, man. Take it easy, bro. All right. Well, now, I mean, just what an amazing I, – I love that. I, this is so much fun. I, uh, I'm i excited for the next segment, too. I mean, I know that you had some feelings about this uh, Wizards trade. I, I wanted to get your, uh, your thoughts on it before I bring the rest of the roundtable in. Uh, I know that you had some questions and stuff, too. I was just playing music for screen with my graphics. I put I pulled the wrong scene up on that one. Um, uh, we spoke about this trade a little bit. Um, if Russell Westbrook doesn't change his style, his selfishness, I've always said a point guard should not take 30 shots a night. The point guard's job is to get the other teammates involved, get them the ball in their sweet spots, keep the offense moving, and then take his shot when it's there and with Bradley Bill and the sad thing is I don't even know most of the <laughs> Wizards roster anymore so I really can't dig deep into it but I just know where I haven't been a Westbrook fan I believe that's why Kevin Durant left OKC because he knew he could never win with him and it's interesting that you say that I'm just gonna really quickly say that Brody fans which I've learned is his nickname um are believe that he's actually a big reason why KD did really well and four times was the scoring title leader, I believe, when he played alongside of him. And they point to that as a reason that they can actually help somebody um, flourish uh, in, in that regard. But uh, we'll see. Uh, it'll, it'll be an interesting thing uh, to know going forward. Um, we have Tim here. How, how are you doing today, Tim? Uh, doing great. Congrats on the big win. Thanks. So um, uh, we also got... Uh, DC's People's Champ here. Um, how are you doing today, People's Champ? You must be super excited. Damn right, I'm super excited, man. This team just beat the last undefeated team in the NFL. I'm over here drinking wine. I'm all excited. I'm loving life right now. Mm -hmm. And Brian, before tonight, I was listening to your podcast, and you were talking about how you thought that it was probably the greatest upset, your Giants beating the Seahawks <laughs> of the season. But I would argue that tonight might now be the biggest upset of the season, um, just uh, the improbability of beating Pittsburgh. I know on your podcast you thought Carol was crazy, as we did on, <laughs> on our podcast last week. I mean, who uh, didn't think Carol was crazy? Let's, right. let's be honest. Yeah, no, nobody. Yeah, well, I mean, did you actually think that they were going to win? Well, I, I tried to told y'all I felt this one. I felt this one like I haven't felt one in a while. And I just knew it, man. I just knew it. I just wish I had some money to put on it to make Car some money off of. <laughs> Carol, 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 this is for you. This is for you. <laughs> <laughs> for those just listening, uh, we've got DC People's Champ bowing down uh, to Carol. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, an exciting uh, time. We also have Arun on the line as well. Arun, what is your instant reaction to this improbable victory? 
Well, I did. I didn't pick Washington, but I definitely remember saying last week Carroll was not crazy with his prediction. So I think I get like partial credit for that. <laughs> like, Arun, you the only one that had my back, Arun. I appreciate. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. That's true. The Rune didn't call you crazy, but he still didn't go with them. So. <laughs> no, but I, I gave like my whole spiel, like why the Steelers, that was a short week. It's going to be a short week. And then James Conner not being out, the Steelers really couldn't run the ball at all. It was like, like they just decided to pass the ball the entire second half. And I was, I was like, this is playing exactly how Carroll wants the game to go. He wants Washington to run the ball and he wants them uh Washington's defense just to force them into the pass, and that's exactly what happened, and Washington won. <laughs> I'm surprised that they went so far away from the run. Uh, you know, I, I just uh, – their offensive line is so dominating. I just thought that they could have probably done a little bit better with a balance. But they're, they're so believed, as we were just talking about, that their cornerbacks were so bad for the Washington football team that they were just going to expose them and it didn't matter. But I guess that wasn't true. But we're here to talk basketball, so we'll switch back onto that – this has been the craziest trade I've ever been a part of. Now, we had talked about it briefly that there was rumors of a Westbrook trade with Wall, and there was, you know, doubt, and, you know, there, there was the no comment by uh, Wall. Uh, but obviously he was being shopped, and he was very unhappy about it. He did want to be reunited with Boogie Cousins. He gets his opportunity uh, in Houston. I think Houston wanted to get rid of a contract. Washington didn't know what they had with a John Wall who had been out of basketball for two years. And they said, look, these are the only two players that could be traded for each other in the league. There's not a lot of other trading partners for either one of them. You know, let's make this happen. We'll give a contingent pick. So that way, if somehow this blows up in Washington's face, which things like this have happened, have blown up in their face before, that they don't have to necessarily give up a first round pick. Uh, maybe it becomes a couple of second round picks. But overall, they get out of the contract. I know that Brian came on here and he talked about how he thought any way to get rid of the John Wall contract would be a good one. And he was supportive of the Westbrook trade, even at that time. Um, and I think, I think it's an okay trade just because we don't know what John Wall is going to bring to the table. But what I have to say, I'm going to get on my soapbox for just a moment and then I'll get all of your instant reactions to the trade. The fandom is now so split. And this is now a crossroads in this franchise's history. I kind of opened the podcast was talking about that. But I'm going to bring that back right now. So it's a crossroad in our franchise's history because you've let go of one of the greatest players in your team's history. Arguably, people think maybe top five, you know, where he lies, you know, there's some debate. But you're getting, getting rid of him. Some people thought he was never, he was untouchable. He would never be traded. And here you bring in a very controversial player, somebody who there's never been an MVP player who's been traded on back-to-back -back years. So there's a lot of question marks with that. Like, why is he the first in that? That's not a good thing per se. But his fans are very fierce defenders of him and think that he's going to go off and his work ethic is going to rub off on the Wizards and they're going to transform behind Westbrook into this juggernaut and slide into maybe the fourth or fifth seed in the East. Not number one. They're not that crazy. But, you know, they, they think that it's going to be five or six and stuff like that. So they come in with a ball of fire. They thank people for letting them join their fan groups. But they're like, you should be thanking us that we are now the fans of this group uh, because Wall was nothing compared to us. And basically anointing Westbrook as the savior of the franchise without him ever playing a game. And I just want them to pump their brakes. And I'm talking to a lot of them because I invited them to actually listen to this podcast tonight. And I'm going to clip this up and I'm going to send it to a bunch of them and say, don't come in super cocky. Don't say that you're the franchise player, even if you are an MVP caliber player. Because at the end of last season, you weren't, Westbrook wasn't the player that he was in his MVP season. So he needs to prove himself. And he needs to do what he has said he's going to do and prop Beal up and make Beal the ne next Kevin Durant, right? Beal's need to be the superstar, and he needs to play off of Beal, and they need to play well together for this to work. And so I think you got to come in and not try to own the place as a fandom and try to understand that there are these diehard Wizards fans slash Bullets fans that love Wall. And there are many that didn't even like Westbrook to begin with, and many of them this is their worst nightmare. You can't come in and just say, your guy sucked, we're much better, 
you know, believe in us, you know, we'll take you to the promised land because that's not going to fly with a lot of fandoms. Yeah. And then to basically be mad when our reaction is get the fuck out of here, you know, you just got to play it a little slower than that. Maybe like wait and see and say, I'm excited for the season. Let's see how this goes and let them play at least a couple of preseason games, if not a, a bunch of regular season games before we anoint Westbrook as the best player in our franchise's history, because that's a tough pill for a lot of diehard fans to swallow. So I, with all of that, and it's a lot to unpack and I understand that. But it's, it's a lot, you know, right now buzzing around. And there's just this huge rift that's forming. And I'm hoping that winning will solve this. But I'm going to start with you, DC's People's Champ. I don't know if you've seen some of these rifts and some of these comments and some of this stuff on Facebook. But what's some of your instant reaction to A, the trade, and B, the fans' reaction? I'm going to start with the fans' reaction first. I have not seen this. And hearing this, I am freaking dumbfounded like what are we red what are we rush to football team fans we want to be split on something like what's going on here <laughs> like don't come in here and say russell westbrook is the, is the messiah he's a savior he hasn't even played a, a single quarter for this team yet and based on his reputation in game i'm still indifferent and this is going to the first question i'm still very indifferent on this trade only because of what i've seen from him on the court um, I've been looking on the score. I've seen, you know, what the w- Wizards' uh, social media accounts, and I see that he seems like a really good guy. On, he seems like a really, really good guy on the surface, off the court. He seems like a really, really good guy, and that's cool. He could be a really good guy, but can he gel with this team? That is the $41 million question. Can he gel with this team? And I'm hoping, with hope, that he can. Because if he cannot, then it makes zero sense to have made this trade. If he cannot go in there and be the point guard that this team needs to get over the hump and make a strong run to the playoffs. I mean, Scott Brooks has been like, I'm pretty sure he's over the moon. He said, that's my point guard. Because he coached him in OKC. So he's like, that's my point guard. So I know he's excited. But... He needs to play some games and show us that he could be a true point guard and really build this team up in terms of getting Bradley Beal the ball, get Thomas Bertans the ball, Thomas Bryant, Rui Hachimura, uh, uh, Devi, Davi, I should say, uh, the rookie that's uh, that we just brought in. Get these guys the ball, but also get yours as well, but not too much, but make sure you're able to be a true point guard. Make sure you improve your team and not yourself. That's going to be the, that's going to be what's going to be the determiner for me. If he could gel and make the team better, then okay, I'm on board. But right now, I'm on, I'm in the middle. I'm on the fence. So Brian, I'm going to go to you next. So you're from more of an outsider's perspective. So his fans are saying that he's a walking triple double and that's what he's going to do. And that's what he's going to bring to this team. Do you think with how this team is structured, that he could get back to those. I'm not saying he's going to get a triple-double every night, but do you think he's going to get back to closer to that, or do you think we'll see some of more of the Houston uh, Russell Westbrook that we saw this past season? Oh, I think um, this is a good fit for Russell Westbrook, honestly. I think, like like I said, when we first talked about it, I felt like this was a move the Wizards had to make. Um, I didn't know that all, all that about his fans uh, and all, all the groups. I didn't know anything about that, but um, – that's interesting to hear as well. I didn't. I guess his fans are very supportive of him, and he is a great player. Obviously, he's a former MVP. Obviously, it worries you a little bit that he has been traded now twice in the last two off seasons. But um, I think he can get back to being a really good player. So far, he seems happy to be with the Wizards. Uh, from what I've seen on social media, he seems happy to be in DC. And maybe being with a player like Bradley Beal will be good for him. And I understand that Wizards fans are going to need time to move on from John Wall because John Wall, like you guys said is one of the best players you've ever had, one of the arguably top five players in Wizards history. So it's not going to be easy to move on from that. But I think Westbrook over time, you know, with a good first season, if they can get back into the playoffs, can win the fans over. So that's my, my thoughts on it, really. I think I think it was the right move for the Wizards, and I think it'll pay off. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that. Cause I, think, I think it could pay off, too, because he's got so many different skill sets. When someone looks like at a walking triple-double – that means he's good at rebounding, which is a huge weakness of a lot of Wizards, especially from the guard position. 
And he's also able to assist the ball because 10 assists a game. I know that he's maybe not the 14 that John Wall was putting up, but we didn't have somebody putting up 10 last season. So that's already a significant upgrade. And if he could just put some points on the board, but also just get everybody else going, I think that it could be really strong. But I think that uh, he's got to be the assassin type that he is, but he's also got to bring everybody along with him and try to gel with them. And I think one of the things that the coach was saying that he was also saying after some of these practices is that everyone's going to have to sacrifice something. He's going to have to sacrifice some of that machismo saying that I'm the guy, everything goes through me. Other people are going to have to sacrifice. Bradley Beal can't be the only guy anymore like he was last season. So everyone's going to have to sacrifice something. Everyone's going to have to put together on defense. So I think offensively, our team, you know, on the starting five, and even in our, you know, our top 10 in our lineup, you know, we could score the ball. Our question marks have most have been on the defensive side. And so uh, can they gel together and play some defense will be a question. And he's a pretty good uh, defensive guard. So, uh, you, know, it's, you know, when he wants to. And I, I like his um, – what he brings to practices. I think what people should know, if people haven't been following the Wizards social media – and the very first practice he got there a little bit late because they were giving him tours and all that sort of stuff. And so they said, just watch this practice. And he was just joking with them from the sideline. And then his first real practice where he's supposed to sit down and play with them. He shows up two hours early and starts shooting around. And then by the time people start coming around, it gets more intense, more intense, more intense until he starts playing with them. And he's inviting them in to this super intense workout, but he's already warmed up for two hours. He's two hours into his workout. And he adds out where he wants to start practice. And, you know, that kind of work ethic, you know, and John Wall brought that to the table too. I don't want to discount John Wall in any way. But I, I think if he can inspire other players on the team, especially other young players, to have that sort of work ethic and commitment, especially on the defensive side, I think, you know, late in games, you know, where legs would usually get tired, if they're, if they're practicing for two extra hours, it will seem less of a wear and tear on their bodies. So, if they ride with him, and I mean, no one has ever said that Russell Westbrook doesn't have the tenacity of this game, right? He is one of the people that just goes, gets you. It reminds me of like a Kobe Bryant or LeBron James, all those players. Um, you know, very few people are nine-time, you know, all first-team NBA. There's only four current ones, I believe, in the league, and he's one of them. So, I mean, he's proven himself time and time again. And I'm excited to see him try to prove the doubters wrong because I'm sure people are saying, oh, you've been traded twice in two years. That means you're washed up. I'm sure that that's a chip on his shoulder. Uh, I'm going to go to Tim next. Uh, oh, Tim. Hey, hey, Robbie. Ho. Yeah. Okay. Some some inside info that uh, I got from Dujanae earlier about this <clears throat> Russell Westbrook, John Wall trade. He was saying that early news on Westbrook is that uh, – he really wants he really wants to be here because he has that relationship with Brooks. This was his destination of choice. And he also sees the negative talk as something that's gonna uh, that he has to prove and will be motivated when he comes in. And then uh with another snippet he sent me. Oh, and about you were saying about practice, he said that's uh one of the reasons why he wanted out of Houston is he felt they lacked seriousness in practice and in prep. And uh, he said he hated that. So uh, just piggybacking off of what you were saying about how intense he practices, that uh, is one of the reasons why he said he wanted to get out of Houston. So hopefully he can bring that culture to the Wizards because uh, they desperately need it. Yeah, for sure. I think that's all. All of those are great points uh, by Dujanae and Andy by uh, Carol. It's just I like the work ethic. I you know, and I'm one of those people like some Wizards fans wrote it off immediately. Some Wizards fans you know, flocked with Wall. Some Wizards fans are going to give it a try. There's a huge range, but I'm of the camp that let's wait and see, at least give it 20 games. I know that the season won't be a full 80-something. I think that they're agreeing on a 50-something. 72. Uh, 72. Oh, they got more. Okay. So NHL is looking at a 53-game season right now. So uh, that will be interesting that the NBA would be that much longer. Uh, usually they're uh, usually they're exactly the same. So, um they're also gotten their game together a little bit earlier. Hockey right now is projecting to be a mid-January start to give some of the teams that didn't make it into the bubble a couple extra weeks of practice until they let them in. In the NBA, they're already about to start to gear up because um, I think some of the first preseason games happen in the next couple of weeks. And then the uh, right around Christmas, uh, the NBA season starts. Uh, so um, it's, it's right around the corner. Uh, and I'm super excited 
to see them try to prove people wrong. And there's just a buzz about this Wizards team that we haven't seen in the last three or four years. So, Tim, you've heard a little bit about the fandom stuff that I've talked about and about everything else. Let, let, let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, I think you're still muted, Tim. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. All right. So you have to have at least one a show. So there it is. <laughs> there it is. Um, well, yeah, no, I think it's huge. Like uh, Carol was saying that um, Westbrook played for Brooks in the past because I think the transition is going to be so much faster and easier now because Brooks had him for years and he knows his style. And like everybody was saying, the fact that he's so intense and such a great competitor is really going to make a huge difference in practice and also bringing along all the young players because it still really is a young roster and you have a lot of unproven guys. But if you make every single practice a war where you have Beal on one side, who, you know, has a little bit of competitive juice inside him and Westbrook on the other side, I think the, the young players are going to really benefit from that. And, um, you know, there's a lot of pressure on the team as, as well as the expectations because a lot of people are going to look for this to blow up and Westbrook has, has his haters too. But um, just, you know, the fact that he's a nine-time All-Star, uh, former MVP, and Wall, is, his health is questionable. I think you have to make this move because the contracts are basically the same. So I think it's worth – you know, rolling the, di the, the die here, but um, no matter what, the fans have to be patient. You have to give it a full season. It's a weird off season. I think even this year, you, you can't fully judge the trade. So I would just preach patience and, you know, have an open mind. It's going to take a little while to gel. For sure. Arun, what are your, some of your thoughts? Um, I know you're always looking at stats and Russell Westbrook has some of the most interesting stat lines of any player in the NBA. Uh, yeah, I think this trade caught me by surprise because I thought there was a possibility the trade would happen, but I was surprised that Washington only had to give up a first rounder in 2023. And that first rounder is top, like it's going to be lottery protected. It's going to be top 10 protected until 2026. And it just could turn into two second rounders. And I think the big thing is just, John Wall, he's replacing John Wall. And Wall, I think the biggest thing with Westbrook is he's going to be healthy more likely than Wall. Wall, since 2017, since that great shot against the Celtics, and he hit that the, maybe the highlight of the decade for the Wizards in that shot, then um, he's only played 79 games since then in the last, like, three years. He hasn't played a game in over 700 days. And it's just pretty, I don't know, like Beal, I think the thing is that they have to play well this year and like really soon because Bradley Beal could demand a trade to another team. They want to hold on to Beal. They don't want to start the rebuild process all over again from 2010 to 2013. And I believe I said before that I wasn't for this trade like initially, but that was because I thought they'd have to go up like two first rounders and a young player like Rui or Thomas Bryant. And then I think Westbrook, he hasn't even had to, like he was the one that won it out in Houston. He didn't show up to practice, so that was the reason he was traded. It wasn't more so that the Rockets didn't want him. It was that Westbrook really wanted to play in Washington with Bradley Beal, with Scott Brooks. And he, they already commenting how he's showing up to practice really early, bringing an intensity to the practice. And yeah, Westbrook is a very polarizing player. I saw like um, some people gave this grade a D for the Wizards, and some people think the Wizards could be the number three seed in the Eastern Conference. So it's like a pretty because Westbrook is very polarizing, but he got 28 points, nine assists, and seven rebounds per game. So or maybe like eight assists and seven rebounds per game, and he's still like a really good player. He made all NBA third team. I think Wall, hopefully he figures it out. But I think his, he hasn't played a game in so long that I think it's a good trade for the Wizards. I, I agree with some of that assessment. It's just, it's hard for me to believe. I, I like John Wall, but we just, he's such a question mark. And 
you get, you know, these last two years of Westbrook's, you know, and these are pivotal times. It's like, does he want another contract after this? And he, over these two years, he's going to have to prove it. And I, I think that's what you want in a player. You want somebody who's going to go out there who likes the coach. It's also a prove it for, you know, Scott Brooks. There's been a lot of Scott Brooks haters and saying that he hasn't you know, done much uh, with the Wizards, but you finally give him his players, his tools. There's a lot of weapons now around him, a lot of young talent that they can kind of mold and work. And this is the greatest chance that they've had probably in the last five years to really do something. And it'll be interesting to see what they're able to do with it. Especially, I agree with what you guys were saying earlier. I, I like if you're going to bring in somebody new in a very shortened off season, at least it's somebody who knows the system already, because uh, that could really backfire if you try to bring in somebody completely different. And it's been a really hard time to try to acquire top talent, you know, top 20 NBA players uh, through free agency for the Wizards. I can't even remember the last time a top 20 player came over to the Wizards in free agency. Um, Arun, do you have any guess of who the last uh, best 2003, player was? I mean, he wasn't top 20. He was like the most improved player, but he was Gobert Arenas was their last like big time free agent. Yeah. That's, That's right. been a while. And I don't think other than that, no, there hasn't been really. Paul Pierce was like an older, he wasn't a top 20 guy and it's when he joined the Wizards though. Right. No, I think, I think your Gilbert Arenas uh, analysis is pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mahimi made top 20 money. So that kind of counts. <laughs> you better stop mentioning Yan Mahimi on this damn podcast. Damn it. <laughs> I'm trying uh, to make him the second RG3. Uh, recurring yeah. Joke. We, we, we need to. Well, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, RD3 did get injured last week, uh, but he, he fought through it and uh, he at least made it a game. So, I mean, I guess we were kind of right to give yeah. him some credit. Kwame Brown is the Wizards' RG3. Then. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, way worse, arguably. Um, the, I mean, RG3. Yeah, at least RG3 the... won Rookie of the Year. Kwame Brown. Right, rookie, yeah. rookie of the Year and brought him to the playoffs this rookie year. Kwame Brown did. But Kwame shit. Brown made more money, I think. Yeah, That's Kwame right. Brown lasted longer, though. Well, actually, I don't know. RG3 is still know. going RG3's strong. Still playing, yeah. Uh, he's, well, he's, yeah. We'll, we'll I see. mean, he we'll started see. last week for your team, Tim. So, um, but I know, but he's on the he's on the IR now. So. Yeah, that's true. All right, Champ. What are some of your thoughts now? You've listened to everybody else's take on uh, on this trade and uh, some of this fandom stuff, and it's just a crazy night. But uh, what is your overall take? Damn, you come right to me after I just literally just died over here. <laughs> yes, that's the best, right? Yeah. Um, and for people who are watching on YouTube and uh, Facebook, I apologize for looking down for most of this segment, but I was doing uh, some research. And I'm sorry, Arun, I got to steal your swag here for a second. John Wall's career average is 19 points, 4.3 rebounds, and 9.2 assists uh, in his career. Whereas Westbrook, 23.2 points. 7.1 rebounds and 8.3 assists a game. So you see the difference there. Wall will dish the ball off to his teammates. Westbrook, not so much. Granted, he did have three straight seasons of the of, of averaging a triple double for the season. So you got to take that into consideration. Now, um, Again, I'm, I, as I said earlier on, I'm very indifferent about this trade because of the fact that I want to see how well he can gel with this team. I want to see if he's going to go out there and be a true point guard and dish the ball off when it's necessary, let his teammates make plays as well and not try to put it on his back because that's what he's had to do in OKC. That's what he, had, that's what he somewhat had to do in, in Houston. I want to see if he can trust his teammates to go make plays. We already know Bradley Bill can make plays. We know Davis Bertans can. That's why they gave him that good that contract. We know that Thomas Bryant can play well in the middle. He's got a he's got a really good front court, so he's got pieces. But can he, as the player that he is, can he rely on those pieces? Does he feel? Does he have the trust in the pieces that are that are positioned on this team to be able to go out there? And just say, okay, you got this, you got this, you got this. Let's make it happen. I want to see that. And we won't wait long to find out because the first preseason game, I think it's next week. <laughs> so we're going to find out early if he has trust 
in this team and in this dynamic? We'll find out very, very early. Point blank period. Yeah, for sure. All right, Brian, what is uh, what is your take over um, overall on the Wizards? We talked about the trade a little bit, but do you think um, this move you know puts them in the playoff picture, to upper echelon, lower echelon of the playoffs, barely may, missed the playoffs? Where do you think that this kind of uh, in your initial? I understand we don't know yet, but yeah. in your initial you know preview. Well, it's, it's funny you ask me that, Robbie, because today on my podcast, Arun asked me whether I think the Wizards are closer to the conference finals or closer to missing the playoffs altogether. And I actually think the Wizards are closer to the conference finals than missing the playoffs completely. Um, do I think they're going to make the conference finals? No, I, absolutely not. I, I don't think they're that good yet. But I think they can be somewhere in like the – anywhere from like five to eight in the East. I think they can make the playoffs for sure. I think this is a talented squad. I think Bradley Beal is, you know, just getting better and better every year. And to pair him with Russell Westbrook, I think he'll be good. Um, and to get Westbrook back with Scott Brooks, I think, like you guys have all said, is really good. I think it's going to be a good partnership um, to reunite them together uh, in, in D.C. And um, I agree with what, what Tim and everybody else has said. Um, Got to have patience. Uh, maybe it'll not work right away, but you know, this is going to be a really weird season. Like I said, only 72 games. So, um, it's, it's all, everything's kind of condensed and rushed and put together. So have a little patience, but this is a good wizard team. You know, let's see how Rui does this year. Let's see how Denny Avita does as a rookie. I think there's Bertans as well. The big free agent re-signing. I think there's a lot to be positive about for the wizards. So yeah, I think anywhere from like five to eight in the Eastern Conference is, is possible for the Wizards. I'll ask you real quickly uh, about your Knicks. Uh, how, how have they oh, been please. doing in the, in the offseason? Do you think that they've made any moves to make any uh, any significant changes for them? Yeah, um, I, I, I don't think the Knicks are going to be very good this year still. Um, <laughs> even with uh, – they really haven't made any moves this offseason other than signing um, Austin Rivers and re-signing Alfred Payton. And um, they signed someone else. Alec Burks is another player they signed. Um, not too much oh, to be getting excited Gilchrist, about. Right? Oh, yeah, and Michael Kidd Gilchrist, too, uh, the former number two pick in the draft. Unfortunately, he'll always be the guy who's picked an after Anthony Davis. So, um, yeah, and, and Carm I'll never forget the night Carmelo Anthony cooked, um, cooked him for over 50 points and just destroyed him. So I'm not too optimistic about the Knicks this year. I'm more excited to see what the rookie Obi Toppin does. Um, I was, I'm still really excited about that pick and RJ Barrett, who was the number one pick last year. Um, I'm, I want to see how he develops in his second year and Kevin Knox in his third year. It's more about developing young players. I would say the Knicks are probably going to win somewhere around 25 games. If I had to guess, um, not too optimistic. Got it. So, um, just so I, I know that champ mentioned the preseason. So the first preseason game is actually this upcoming Sunday uh, they're playing the Nets, uh, which could be pretty exciting. And it'd be interesting to see if Westbrook uh, versus uh, is Durant back. Or, um, yeah, he uh, should be back. I just don't know if he's playing in the preseason or not. He might take the preseason off. Right. So this just came out. A couple of things have come out this week of the NBA as a little segue. Uh, one is you can't choose to, to rest people anymore. If they're, if they're healthy, they've got to play. If it's a nationally televised game, this is an interesting rule that the NBA is putting in there. And there's talk about there's going to be a big fine if, to the team if they don't. Um, the other thing is, is they can't go to bars, nightclubs. They can't be around in venues for 15 or more people. I love how people are talking about how uh, Harden's going to have to try to find a way uh, to, um, you know, do a strip club in his house or something. <laughs> and, you know, and so, like, you know, so that way that, the, you know, they can still uh, do all that. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they kind of get around some of these rules, uh, but it's going to be a, a crazy year for the NBA if they don't get to Robbie, go to the strip they also, clubs. They, they also, they've also suspended uh, marijuana testing as well. That's true. That's true. So they can party in their own house pretty much, but they just can't party anywhere else is what we're, what we're learning. Um, so, like what uh, I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, it's, it's a, it'll be interesting to see if any of these rules – you know, have an effect on the game. Uh, it'd be interesting to see some of these rules, how they affect future seasons, you know, whether it's something that some of this stuff is implemented going forward. Um, so, but just to continue on the preseason thing, the, the Wizards are playing the Nets on Sunday. 
And then the following Thursday, uh, the, the Pistons uh, play at Washington at 7. The Nets game was a 6 o'clock game. And then the last one is also against the Pistons, uh, but this time, uh, I guess they're both in Washington. So there's one on Thursday and there's one on Saturday. And that reminds me of something. Uh, the schedule was released for the first half of the season for the Washington Wizards. And if you have missed it, you can go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash sports OTHP. We've posted it there. Something they're doing that's unique to this season that I've never seen before uh, is they're going to do back-to-back games uh, on, on the road or at home against the same opponent. So that way teams don't have to travel as much. Um, and there seems to be some back-to-back games, like back-to-back nights, but there seems to be less of that. So, uh, but they're trying to do less travel, but not as much like wear and tear with the back-to-back. So I'm interested to see how the schedule affects things uh, going forward. Um, and the first actual game of the season that will count will be against the 76ers on the 23rd, and then they play the Magic on the 26th, and then they play the Magic again on the 27th. So it's an example of a back-to-back nights against the same team uh, happening. And then on the 29th, uh, the Bulls uh, will play at Washington, and then at the 31st, the Bulls will play at Washington. So it's, again, to, at the sort of the start of the season, they were playing three opponents, but that represents five games. So it's kind of a little bit different. Uh, than people may have seen before. Uh, we are going to, I'm not going to be on the week of the 21st. I'm taking a, a vacation. Um, but the guys might be joining Carol. We'll, we'll sort of decide about that. But we'll definitely be talking more basketball on the 28th once we have a couple of games in uh, to into it. Um, I'm not sure we'll know enough next week with one preseason game to really uh, give a good uh, breakdown of what we think it's going to be. So we'll probably you know, bring this Wizards quorum back in a couple of weeks. Uh, but uh, I'm going to give each one of you guys a final uh, segment. I'm going to start off with Arun. Uh, what is your final takeaway, either from the uh, the trade or the wonderful victory and or both or anything else you want to talk about? Um, yeah, I think it was a good trade. I'm really happy that Washington was able to pull out the win. I want to give a shout out to a former Washington backup, Colt McCoy came away with the win. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> it's true. I mean, also, I'm saying RG3, but I love it. Yes, I, I'm surprised <laughs> it wasn't an RG3 reference. That, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, now the best player in Washington is the number three. And I guess, yeah, back to RG3 recap. Um, I guess he almost pulled out the upset. I know Tim was upset that Luke Wilson didn't catch the pass, but I guess the Ravens GM, they didn't find those replacement players like the Washington team in the 1987. So Luke Wilson with the drop pass against the Steelers, that was a difference in the game ultimately. And RG3 pulling his hamstring and RG3 thinks, thought he could have gotten the win after pulling that hamstring. What a great quarterback RG3 is in college, <laughs> but not so much last Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> but... But I, I do uh, – I give them a lot of credit for trying, though. I thought they put together a great effort in that game. I watched that game and was kind of surprised at how close it was. And it maybe gave uh, the Washington football team a bit of a blueprint of how to beat them. Um, so um, so I, I'm thankful for that. But, Arun, uh, you've been fantastic, uh, as always. Um, and uh, I really appreciate uh, your time and I uh, look forward to breaking down more Wizards and uh, Washington football team in the future with you. Thanks. Shout out to Otto Porter, parting it up, Harold's cousin. Thanks. <laughs> That's true. He didn't uh, call me either. <laughs> he didn't party with you either, yeah. Uh, Tim, I'm going to go to you next real quickly. Uh, you've got a Ra- Ravens game tomorrow on Tuesday night football. I know it's a, a, a classic. Um, yeah, I hope that you destroy the Cowboys as always. Um, any final thoughts? I'm sure you watched a little bit of this Washington football team game as well. Uh, yeah, I watched. On... Yeah, well, any thoughts on that and the game tomorrow? And any final thoughts on anything? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a great win for Washington. I think they're gelling quickly. And as I said in the group chat, if you were a uh, Washington, you know, fan who hated on Rivera already, you, you should be ashamed of yourself. You know, you got to be patient. Clearly, he needs a little bit of time, and you get results like that. But hopefully, we can help you guys out. 
uh, Moore and beat Dallas uh, tomorrow night. Um, it'll, it'll be kind of tough with the Ravens still having some COVID players out. But uh, it's, it's really hard to follow a rune. You know, he's, he's too hilarious. But I guess on a serious note, I did love um, John Wall's farewell tweet. I thought it was really classy. And I actually um, really hope that the Wizards franchise retires his jersey. I, I think he deserves it. And um, there aren't a lot of players that did what he did in Washington. So he, he should be celebrated for that. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we see that happen. But anyway, have a good rest of the show. Thanks for having me, and uh, good night, everybody. Thank you, Tim. Good luck on the Ravens tomorrow on Tuesday football. And uh, they also play on, it. on Sunday as well, right? No, they play next Monday night football against uh, Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. That's crazy. At least that so, game was already later. That, that'll be a nuts game because Cleveland's been really good this year. So best of luck on both of those Yeah, games. that'll be a fun one too. Yeah, sounds good. All right, well, we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, have a good one, guys. See ya. All right. Uh, Brian, I got to listen to uh, most of your podcasts uh, earlier today. I think I got like 80% of the way through it uh, before I had to get ready to watch uh, the Washington football team. But a great podcast, as always. If people want to uh, check it out, uh, again, uh, sportsothp.com. They click the podcast partners button. It's a new flashy button, the giant P for podcast partners. And you click on it, and then you scroll down. Uh, to Pond Further Review with Brian Brennan, and you can check it out. He's got a bunch of great shows over the last couple of weeks. I know he's had his dad on. He's had a lot of the guests like Tim and Arun. I know that he's had Michael Edgley, and he gave Michael Edgley some shout-outs because it is his birthday. Yeah, happy you know, birthday, like, Mike, again. Ha- happy birthday, Mike, indeed. And, uh, and happy so, birthday to you too, Robbie, uh, uh, on Wednesday. Happy birthday. Thank you. I appreciate that. So um, this was definitely a great uh, birthday victory. Uh, but um, – uh, anything else? I mean, it was a great breakdown of the uh, the weekend football um, by uh, by you. I, I did like how excited you got at some of the questions that you had to answer in your uh, sort of uh, interview of yourself in some ways. Uh, I thought that was very entertaining. Uh, it kind of reminded me, I've been listening to a Tom Green interview lately, and you kind of reminded me of a young Tom Green, which is oh. uh, just good. Well, and, well, thank uh, you. I appreciate yes. that. So I, I found that it's very funny. a compliment. I wasn't expecting so, that. But yes. um, thank you. Brian, yeah. I appreciate the shout out as well, my brother. I appreciate that. Yeah. I didn't know that okay. I was literally breaking news while you were recording your podcast. So I really, yeah. that's really awesome. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, champ. We appreciate, we appreciate you breaking that to me. I really appreciate that. That sounds good. Well, Brian, I'll give you the floor. I, you guys are still the, uh, the champions. Uh, <laughs> I know we talked about um, uh, you guys had to probably win two, if not three out of the last four games. How, how are you feeling going into those last four? Um, uh, I'm, I'm a little nervous, uh, for sure. Um, I think the next game is one of the more winnable games. It's against Arizona at MetLife stadium, but after that, they got to play the Browns and then they play the Ravens and then they finish the season against the Dallas Cowboys at MetLife stadium. So they got to win. I feel like at least two or three of those games and it's not going to be easy at all. So, um, hopefully we'll see what happens. I'm excited to still be in first place. Um, uh, shout out to, Colt McCoy again, Alfred Morris, and Graham Gano supplying all the points yesterday, former Washington players. Uh, so I appreciate their efforts uh, helping the Giants win yesterday. And, um, yeah, just, just happy to be in first place. It's, it's pre- feeling pretty good. Yeah, so it's Washington football team players helping the two teams that no one expected to beat, you know, two of the better teams in the league. Yep. And it's a, a very topsy-turvy, strange 2020 season. But I'm happy we've been able to break it down. I know that we're about 20 episodes into this COVID season of season five of Sports on the Hill podcast, and you've been able to come on almost every episode and help us break uh, down uh, from the outsider's perspective, and I appreciate it. I hope people check out Upon Further Review with Brian Brennan again on the Podcast Partners uh, page, or you can search for it on iTunes and all the other podcast partners. But thank you, Brian, for joining us, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Yeah, no problem, guys. Have a great night. Talk to you next time. Sounds good. All right. We got our last person of our NBA roundtable. He sees people champ. Uh, you've been killing it with all the different podcasts. So much wrestling news coming out every single day. Um, and uh, it's been uh, a crazy time period. I, I know that the ratings for, for SmackDown haven't been quite as good as some people would have liked. It'll be interesting to see. Do you think that the ratings will uh, dwindle more uh, if it's uh, if they 
uh, go away from the arena that they are using because they're going to have to give it back to the NBA? Or how do you think that's going to play into that? I am so glad you brought that up, uh, Robbie, because uh, tonight they actually had their final, sh- they're having their final show in the Amway Center for uh, with the Thunderdome from Raw. They're actually going to Tropicana Field in Tampa Bay to continue the Thunderdome concept there, at least until the springtime when the Tampa Bay Rays begin their, their baseball season. So Right now, um, they've already got their plan in place. They're going two hours north of where they were to uh, continue the concept. But it's crazy, um, and I mentioned this in our group chat, that during this COVID era, only nine shows, only nine episodes of SmackDown have gone under 2 million viewers average. And one of those shows was actually on FS1 because of a sports conflict on Fox. So every show, even during the the COVID nineteen era, have been two million plus because they're on Fox. They're on Fox, which is a network that everybody who hasn't cut the cord has. So as and that's opposed to Raw, which averages around one and a half million views because they're on USA Network. And again, this is a, this is a time where a lot of people cut the cord, so they don't have cable TV. So. They don't watch USA Network or some people like myself, I DVR and watch it the next day so I can skip the commercials. So ratings are going to be very, very interesting. It's, but I'm more focused on Wednesday night ratings because of the fact that AEW, which is still a very new company, uh, only a little over a year old, going up against a comp- going up against a brand like NXT, who's been around for at least about six years. And... Um, have moved to Wednesdays to compete basically with AEW regardless of what the brass says and their ratings war has been very very interesting last week they they beat them by almost 300,000 viewers because they had a very respectable hall of fame wrestler like Sting debut on their programming and now this week he's going to speak and I told Seth and Donnie this the other day I said Staying speaking on that show, they're going to break 1 million on this show. Definitely. Because you're going to bring in the old wrestling fan, fan fandom from WCW days, because this will be Sting's second appearance on TNT since 2001, 19 years. And you're going to bring them in. So I think they're going to break. I'm, I'm, I'm making this prediction right here, right now. AEW is going. The AEW Dynamite this coming Wednesday is going to break one million viewer, one million viewers, in the demo uh, in the overall ratings war this coming Wednesday. Interesting, interesting. Well, I look forward to you breaking that down and recapping all of the different uh, wrestling matches and all the different you know shows. There's so much to talk about. I'm so happy that you guys uh, can do a whole podcast on that. So people who want to you know, follow that, you know, continue to be uh, lovers of the True Radio Network. I know Hertz House used to cover uh, wrestling, um, so I'm happy that you've been able to pick up that torch and, uh, and continue that. And we appreciate your breakdown and your love of the Washington football team uh, and of the Wizards and, and all of the stuff that you bring uh, to the table. So, again, just like uh, with Brian, click the podcast partners button on sports.thp.com. You can check out the No Spots podcast. Uh, you can also check them out on all the big uh, podcast platforms. And search for them on Facebook where they do some live simulcasts and things like that. But uh, so any final thoughts um, before we let you go, uh, Champ? Um, yeah, so today we were supposed to bring out uh, our third to last episode of World Tag League Best of the Super Juniors Rewind because we have found out who are the finalists for those two tournaments. But unfortunately, uh, we had some very, very bad technical difficulties in terms of audio. So we had to scrap the audio, so we're going to re-record it later this week to not only review what pa- happened this past week, but we are also going to preview uh, the final for both tournaments, which is taking place this coming Friday in the morning. It's going to air 4 a.m. Eastern time here in the U.S. at 6 p.m. Japanese time. Uh, so we'll talk about that, and then, of course, on the podcast coming up, the no, the regular No Spots podcast, myself and Sith are going to break down uh, what happened last night with uh, NXT uh, NXT Takeover War Games, which was an amazing, awesome pay per view. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We did a lot of reactions for that last night, so, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to break that down. We're going to break down what happened this week as well as uh, 
the main roster is building towards T TLC 2020, uh, TLC Tables, Labs, and Chairs, their annual pay-per-view where they have at least one match where the stipulation is either a tables match, a ladders match, a chairs match, or a TLC match. So we're going to do that. Live stream is going to be Saturday at 5. And then, of course, we're going to break down uh, the finals of World Tag League and Best of Super Juniors coming up this next Monday. So that's what we got for you. We got a lot going on here. Wow, that's amazing. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, Champ. And uh, we look forward to having you break down future games with us. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for having me, guys. Y'all have a good night. And Carol, again, I got to bow, bow in reverence to you, my brother, because, man, you went out on a limb. I, like I said, I almost got convinced, but I was like, no, I can't. I can't. I should have. I should have gotten the car with you. I should have. I should have. I should have gotten the car with you. Got to ride, man. Sometimes you just got to ride, baby. And by the way, you are killing it with the car sales, man. I, I've, I've been watching, man. Awesome stuff, brother. Hey, man. Appreciate it, brother. You know, I'm on a mission. Got a new career, trying to flourish at it, and uh, appreciate all the support from everybody on the network, everybody on the show, man. I appreciate it. I love it. And you know, come on down to Waldo on the 2450 Crane Highway. Come on, let me get your new user pre-owned certified. You know what it is. But appreciate you as always coming on, champ. I'm watching the end of the game, man. Waiting to see what they're going to say on NFL Network about this. You know. Uh, love y'all, brothers, man. Y'all have a good night. All right, man. Take it easy. Oh, Robbie, another two-hour wow. show. Yeah, I haven't even been looking at the time. I have no idea how long we've even been on. But it's been a while. Oh, it's almost two hours. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we about to wrap it up. I did it almost a four hour show on at the bar yesterday. So yeah, that's six hours on camera in two days. It's time to go off and watch the NFL network and see what they have to say about this victory that nobody, you know, didn't think was gonna happen until after but I But dominoes started to fall though. All week long, more experts were starting to shift over and I was like, Oh my god, is this you know, is this gonna happen? Is this gonna happen? Watched our show, Robbie. Obviously <laughs> they saw what I said and he was like, yeah. Oh, we can't let him be the one that say it. We gotta say it too. Now they're gonna be like, Yeah, we knew it was we told you it was gonna happen. You know, I said it first, damn it. Yeah, I it was funny. I was talking to my dad before the game. I was like, it's kind of brilliant because, like, I mean, if they didn't win, like, no one's going to be like, oh, my God, Carol, so <laughs> you know, everyone's going to know, like, obviously. But, like, we do, then Carol was right the whole time. So it's, it's kind of brilliant. I, I, I have to tip my cap to you. Um, you know, it's uh, been a, a crazy week. I'm excited uh, for my birthday week. Uh, this was a great way to start it off. I, I look forward to breaking down the uh, the 49ers game that's happening in Arizona, which is such a strange thing. Do you think that that will help them that they know the field a little better? I mean, I they know. I mean, it, this is they played in Arizona earlier this year, and they have yeah, to play it. Do people? I don't even know if we talked about this on the thing. The reason they have to do this is in San Francisco, teams are not allowed to play. It's not like you know some places are like you can't do it with fans. They're like, nah, you can't do it. And so they had to make a deal with Arizona to play on their off weeks uh, in their stadium. Um, and so, which is crazy because the count in Arizona, the COVID count is higher than it is in San Francisco right now. So they have to make San the 49ers go to a place that's worse to play their games. So how crazy is, but they yeah. don't care. They're, they're fine with them playing it there. So. I, agree. I think California is about to go into a certain part of California is about to go into a lockdown for the next three weeks. But I'm just saying the actual cities themselves, the COVID cases in, you know, where, yeah, it's worse. It's crazy. Yeah. But uh, we want to get ready to wrap it up for tonight. Appreciate y'all tuning in. It's been a great show. It's a great day. Victory Tuesday. Washington football team, three straight games in a row, knocking off the undefeated, well, used to be undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. And if any of my Steelers fans are still tuning in, um, I'm waiting for a text. But I know you're going to call and text me. Because I remember the last time we played, y'all made sure y'all called and text me. I ain't even going to mess with you tonight because it ain't even working. I'm basking in the the five and seven and then you got that 11 and one you're always going to have that washington football team taste in your mouth because hey we were a better team tonight but uh the burgundy and gold we're both what rocking uh, the uh 
Yeah, I had to rock, you know, I had to rock the burger. I did too. So we matched and it worked out well. I was going to wear this new jersey uh, for the Caps, but I was like, you know what? We'll rock our own apparel tonight. And uh, sports.thp.com, click on the Washington football team is reissued apparel. You get the giant S t shirt. You get the, the hoodie that Carol's got. You get the District of Champions merch as well. Um, definitely check us out and uh, support the show and support the movement. Yeah, make sure you check out the website. Make sure you check out the YouTube channel, Carol Porter the Third. That's for three eyes. Make sure you check out the Instagram, Twitter, Sports OTHP, Sports OTHP Apparel. You see the shirt in the background. You know what we do. You know what it is. But Another great show, episode 206 in the books. And it was a great show. Season five, episode 20. 20 episodes already into season five. It's crazy. Hey, I'm doing two, three shows a week now. I done lost count. So <laughs> if you don't keep track, Robbie, I, I lose track. That's why I have a website, so we can keep track. Exactly, exactly. Well, we about to get out of here. I mean, the show is always with a Money Convo by Renegade. Make sure you check it out. He just put his numbers up for the you know, Spotify, I believe. He had, I'm not even going to try to remember. I think it was over almost half a million streams. Uh, all these other analytics we went over last time at the bar. But check it out. Money Convo. Go follow him on Instagram, Renegade703. Go follow him on YouTube, Renegade703. I think it's just, yeah, Renegade703 on uh, YouTube also. Go check it out. Appreciate y'all following, liking, supporting DC Sports Weather Politics. It's not just a catchphrase. It's not just a motto. It's what we do. We out.